Hello everyone, this is Pastor Robert Anderson. It's great to be with you again. I love bringing you the Word of God because I know that it causes transformation in the lives of those who will hear it, not just with their minds, but with their spirit. And so it's great to be with you. Hey, it's mid-December right now when I'm uh, doing this uh, broadcast and it's an exciting time uh, when we celebrate the birth of Christ Jesus. And uh, today I'm going to minister to you here on Streams of Life broadcast about God's extended glory. God's extended glory. In other words, there was a time where the glory of God that was in heaven was extended down to earth in such a way that it had never been extended before. And he extended his glory not just to anyone, he extended his glory to you and me. And when I say the word glory, the word glory in Hebrew is kavod, and it means weight or a weighty thing. In fact, that word was used oftentimes when someone would present uh, money or, or a weight of something. They would weigh the money, and it would determine its value. And so they would declare the kavod of it. In other words, the value of what was given in order to pay for something that was desired, that was wanted. And so when God extended his glory into the earth, it was the weight or the value of all that he was given into the earth for you and me. And God's extended glory. So I want to talk about when this began and when it happened in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. We're going to read something that's very well known to many of you. And uh, some would say it's the story of, of Christmas or the story of the Christ child. But we're going to dig a little bit deeper into this because there's something that took place at this very moment that is absolutely amazing. And it was done for you and me. So Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, we read now, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child by the Holy Spirit. Now that was different. In verse 19, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, you see, he didn't understand that, he was minded to put her away secretly. But thank God for God's grace, because here's what happened. While he thought about hiding his wife, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from all their sins. Wow, what news. And so we go to verse 22, and let's continue reading. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophets, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child. That's just amazing. And bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Now this portion of, of scripture is very beautiful and you know there's been many plays, many children's plays, many songs written uh, about this story and we'll find more detail in uh, other gospels in the Word of God. And, uh, but as we see these plays, as we hear these songs, did you know that there's so much more depth to what was going on in this moment than we could even imagine? And right now, even in this hour, God by His Spirit is revealing new revelations concerning what went on when He extended His glory through His only begotten Son, through a virgin, into the earth for you and me. And so we're going to uh, go a little bit deeper in the scriptures here and Find out some things that's just absolutely incredible, and it was all done to bring salvation to you and me, to deliver us from eternal separation from God, 
to reach out and redeem and restore us back to him. All this was done because of the love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so with this, we're going to dig deeper. Uh, there's astounding mysteries uh, hidden within the scriptures. And the thing is, as we begin to meditate and we pray and we ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us some things that we've not seen before, uh, the Spirit of God will reveal to us things that bring us transformation and cause us to be just so much more grateful, so much more thankful for the love of the Father and the price that was paid to redeem us back to Himself. And so uh, let's look at it. They called His name Emmanuel. And it means God with us. And so we read this, and it, it, by the announcement of an angel visiting Joseph in a dream, making this announcement, it sounds really like it's something that's never happened before. In other words, this is Emmanuel, God with us. And so when, when we read this, we have to ask ourselves the question, well, does this mean God was not with us before this time? I mean, what does this mean, God with us? And so I ask you this question, as a, I asked myself this question one time as we read it, did God not walk with Adam in the garden? We read it in the Bible in Genesis that God was with Adam and, and he walked with him. So what does this mean with the angel announcing Emmanuel, God with us? Let's look at some more in the Old Testament. Did he not speak to Abraham when he called Abraham? and told him that he would have as many children as there were stars in the, in the heavens or the sands, the grains of sand on the shore. Or how about him cutting a covenant with Abraham? Was not God with Abraham at that time? Did not God speak to Noah to build the ark? Did not God talk to Noah, show him how to build this ark? And let's keep going. How about Moses? We've all heard about Moses. Many of us have seen the movie about Moses and the Ten Commandments and, and God visited Moses, spoke to him through a burning bush, delivered his people uh, through uh, plagues and, and miracles and signs and wonders and they were released from Egypt after over 400 years of slavery and then while they were in the desert for 40 years God visited Moses, visited the people upon a mountain he came in thunder and lightning, smoke. Uh, the whole mountain would shake. In fact, the people were so uh, uh, afraid of the, of, the, of the glory of God and of the sound of God at that time that they didn't want to, they didn't even want God to talk to them. They just said, hey, Moses, you talk to God. We're, they were afraid. And God visited Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments. So was not God with us at that time? So there's something special here. There's a mystery that needs to be understood and needs to be known when the angel said to Joseph, his name is Emmanuel. It's God with us. Something that's not happened before. Something that's different. It's never happened this way before. This is special. This is unique. This is a glory extended to the earth, to mankind in a way that's never been extended before. Yes, God was with us before, but let's keep reading about uh, some things here. How about the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel? Did not God speak with them? Did not God speak with them in a dream and give them visions? Were there not uh, miracles that took place through Elijah and fire coming down from heaven and, and uh, just incredible things that, that God did through the prophets? Was he not there? As we read about those stories, we we think to ourselves, wow, how amazing that must have been. And yet, when the angel visited Joseph in a dream, it was as if all that was, all that was good, all that was important, but what's happening right now is God is with you. So what does that mean? So it's not just about God being with us. There's, there's something here that we need to discover. And as we go to another gospel, the gospel of John, we're going to read something here because the Holy Spirit began to reveal things to John and it has to do with the very same moment when the only begotten Son of God was born here in the earth and uh, the Lord began to reveal some things. So let's go to John chapter 1 and we're going to start with verse 1 and we're going to read through verse 5 and let's see what mysteries can be seen here concerning 
what happened when Christ Jesus was born in the earth that made it so unique. Verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2, He. Now, I want you to notice this. In the beginning was the Word. Well, who is the Spirit of God speaking about here? It's talking about a person, and we know that because in verse 2, it begins with He. The Word is a person. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through the Word, Him. And without Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Now, John is speaking of the Word of God, a person that was with God in the beginning that created all things visible and invisible. In fact, he, he wasn't just in the beginning, he is the beginning. And the, and the Bible calls him the Word. And then I want us to go down to verse 14, and this is it, everyone. This is the revelation that helps bring what we read just a few moments ago about Emmanuel, God with us. This is the revelation that the Lord brings in the Word that helps us understand what God with us is, really means here. Verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. You see, yes, God was with us before. He was with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He was with uh, Adam. He was with Noah. He was with uh, the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. He was with them in miraculous ways, astounding ways God was with them. But he was not with them like he was right here. And the Word, the one that created all things, and the Word, the one that created all things visible and invisible, he, the Word, Christ Jesus, the one that was with God in the beginning and is the beginning, became flesh and dwelt among us. You see, God was with us before, but Christ the Word, the creator of all things, had never become one of us before. You see, He was with us in a whole different way. Here, here's what it is. He had never become flesh. He had never become His own creation before. He had never become human flesh before. In other words, the one who is in the beginning was now experiencing a new beginning Himself. It's not that God was with us. It's that Christ God became us to save us. He became us to save us. He's Emmanuel, God with us, because He became in human form. He is incarnate. He took upon flesh Himself. He walked with us as us. Christ, the Word, came down out of heaven, God's glory, to us, unto us, for us, walked with us. That's what He was trying to say. This is, this is what's so amazing, is that in heaven, the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, in all of His majesty, the weight of Jesus, God the Father sent His only begotten Son, and He was placed in the womb of a woman. He was placed in the womb of the woman. In other words, the Son of God was given, and the child was born. The Son... Christ in heaven was inside the child, the fleshly body, Jesus. It was all God and all man as one in one body, God with us. And with that, it was the glory of the Father extended to mankind for a purpose, to redeem you and me back to himself. Now, this is just so amazing. And I just praise God for this special time. Our creator became his own creation so that his own creation could be saved by its creator. That's what happened when Christ Jesus was born. Is God with us. It's, it's an incredible thing that the Father and the Son and the Spirit did in this moment. 
so that we can be redeemed and restored back to the Lord. We have something to praise the Lord for. We have so much to be grateful and thankful for. You see, when we see the plays and the nativity scenes and the, the little Christ child and all the animals and, and uh, the wise men around, you know, we look at it and we, we see it as something beautiful and, oh, that's so sweet, that's so precious. But we have to understand the cost of what took place, the essence of what took place from heaven to earth, and that the creator of all things, invisible and visible, came down into the earth, left his glory, placed himself in a woman's body to become you and me so that he could be the sacrifice and take upon himself your sin and my sin. Born in a body, God with us. Oh, this is just so amazing. And so I want to go... Uh, here and read a little bit more in verse 14. It says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. We beheld his glory. This is the Apostle John speaking about how whenever you looked at Jesus, whether he was a child or whether he grew up as an adult, you were beholding the glory of God wrapped up in flesh. Watch what it says here. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. This is our Lord now. He's full of grace and he's full of truth. So when the word was laying there as a baby in the manger, it was an expression of God's glory in a way that had never been expressed before. It was a different glory. It was an extended glory from heaven to earth, a new extension, a new reaching out of God's love, a new reaching out of the Father's love to you and me and to all humanity. It was his extended glory. It was a stretch as far as he could stretch out to redeem and restore mankind back to himself through salvation. It was an extended glory. Look, angels had not seen their creator this way before. Now, we just read in uh, the book of John that Jesus, the Christ, was with God in the beginning, and it was through Christ Jesus that all things were created. This tells us that Jesus was the creator of angels. And so the angels had seen their creator, Christ, in heaven all this time. But now something happened in heaven. Christ Jesus left heaven, left his glory. In other words, where they looked around, it was, where's Christ? Where's the Word? Where is He? And He left heaven, came down the earth, and now He's a baby in human form. And there's something that's interesting here. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6, it reveals to us something that the Father said to the angels while Jesus was laying in a manger as a baby, as He came into the earth, the Father commanded, he commanded the angels to worship him. And so the angels in that moment, you see, are looking down at their own creator in a way that they've never seen their creator before. In the, in the lowly estate of a human being, a child in a manger, and God the Father told all the angels, worship him in all this extended glory. I know you haven't seen him this way before. I know you don't understand everything that's going on. I know you don't realize the complete plan, angels, but this is the creator. This is the word. This is the glory of the Lord in fullness of grace, in fullness of truth, right there in that crib for a purpose. And that purpose was not to the angels. The purpose was not to the angels. The purpose was to you and me. This birth was not for the angels. This gift was not for the angels. It was a gift to humanity. And the angels were worshiping their creator in the midst of it all, not quite understanding everything that was going on. And yet it was God's glory extended to you and me. Emmanuel, God's God with us because he became one of us wrapped up in flesh. Man, that's so amazing. The grace, this truth, this glory was us. Now, I want to uh, ask you a question here. The word says that Jesus was full of grace and full of truth. 
when he came into the world. Now, listen to this. How much grace does God have? How much grace does he have? Can you answer that question? Well, I can't answer it because his grace continually abounds to me. His grace continually abounds to me every day. And you know what? His grace continues to abound to you every day. We're, we're imperfect. We do wrong. Things we shouldn't think, things we shouldn't say, actions that we shouldn't uh, do. And yet the Lord's grace is continually extended to us through his love and through the salvation of Jesus. How much grace does God have? Do you know that the word reveals that the fullness of God's grace was inside that little baby that was given to you and me. So when we look at the Christ child, when we look in that manger at this Christmas season, we're seeing the fullness of the Father's grace wrapped up in a body as a gift to you and me. And that's so amazing. And then the scripture didn't, didn't stop right there. The Holy Spirit writes through John that it, it's the fullness of God's truth. So I ask you another question. How much truth does God have? Well, it's not that God has truth. He is the truth. He is, he is all truth. And the word reveals here, the word of God reveals that the Christ child, Jesus, in that manger when he was born, that the fullness of God's truth was wrapped up inside of Jesus as a gift, wrapped up as a gift, unto you. Can you say that with me? For unto me Christ was given. For unto me the fullness of God's grace was given. For unto me the fullness of his truth was given. For unto me the glory of the Lord was extended into the world. Angels worshipped the creator of the universe wrapped up in a baby and his glory was extended to me so that one day I could experience and see his glory and majesty forever and ever and ever. Wow, that's just so amazing. It's God's glory extended. Man, say it with me again. For unto me, Christ was born. It's a gift. It's a gift from the Father. There's ne there will never be another gift like this. Nothing can match it. It's the weight of God. It's the total value of the Lord's glory, the total value of his truth, the kavod, the glory of God there for you and me. And the thing is, is we have to unwrap the gift that's given. You know, yes, Christ Jesus was born, but there's something that we have to do just like when we're given a gift. Well, the gift's wrapped. And so we have to unwrap the gift and open it up and receive the gift. Well, Christ Jesus was a gift given to us by the Father, a gift for our salvation. But we've got to unwrap the gift. And how do we do that? Well, we have to do it by faith and by our mouth speaking from our heart, saying, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the only begotten Son of God and that the Father God because of his love, sent you into the world and that you were born of a virgin, you lived, and then you were crucified for my sins. You took upon yourself my sins and paid the price so that I could be redeemed back to the Lord. And then after you died, you rose again from the dead after three days and you're alive with the Father forevermore forevermore. Lord, I receive you, the gift of salvation. You are my Savior. I confess you as my Lord. I confess you as my Savior. God, come and live within me. And here's, here's the thing. Jesus was born as the Christ child so that you and me could be born again. In fact, Jesus spoke of it. Unless a man is born again, he cannot even see the kingdom of God. And so Jesus was born so that you and me could be born again. So I pray if you're not born again, just begin to pray right now and say, Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I receive the price of what you did for me on the cross. You were born to die for me. You were a gift to me. And receive him as your Savior and Lord today. 
And I tell you what, you will never be the same. All your past is washed away, just like a baby. A newborn baby doesn't have a past. When you're born again by the Spirit of the living God through the salvation of Christ Jesus, all your past is washed away through the blood that He gave on the cross for you and me. This is so fabulous. It's the glory of God from heaven. Jesus is the glory of God from heaven. The weight of Him, the majesty of Him, the splendor of Him, the strength of Him, the love of Him, the fullness of His grace, the fullness of His truth, wrapped up in a body, given as a gift for you and me. It was God's glory extended for unto me Christ Jesus was born. So the next time you see a, a nativity scene, you can look and when you see that, that baby laying there, you can say, for unto me God's glory was extended. For unto me Christ Jesus was born. And because Christ Jesus was born, I have been born again. Isn't that wonderful? So I just bless you this day, everybody. I thank you for tuning in to Streams of Life uh, broadcast. And we, we love you. And I believe that the anointing and the power of the Spirit ministered to you today. And uh, I just thank God for you. And I pray for you today. Lord, I, I just thank you that your anointing, your power, your presence uh, comes right through that camera. And wherever these uh, beautiful individuals are whom you love, whom you, you gave your best for, the Lord Jesus Christ. All your glory was extended to. Lord, I thank you that they're touched, they're saved, they're healed, they're delivered, and we declare it in Jesus' name. Go and live in the light of Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs>